What's going on, fellow humans and resellers? It is I, James, RedoptionAgency.com. 22 years selling full-time on eBay. And it is Tuesday morning. I forgot my hat boxes. Only got 75 hat boxes left. A hundred, actually. Bah, bah, bah. All right, we are at 6.45 a.m. So when I went to bed last night, I was at what? I was at... At about 10 o'clock at $610. All right, so this morning, 652. So only about $40 between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. So four hours, $10 an hour. So, yeah, 10 o'clock. 10.05 was my, I had one at 10.05, one at 11.56, so almost two hours later. Then at 12.30, sold two. Then nothing again till 5.30. So another shut, shuttish down overnight. Hopefully it was to fix the shipping problem that was yesterday. So, we'll see if that's still going on today or not. Where it is changing the... Automatically changing the shipping policy. Not staying on your own is creating its... Creating a uh, copy like it did once before. So, same old problems always rear their ugly head again and again and again on eBay. A constant battle but at 645 we were at sixty dollars so that's pretty decent for so early compared to past days let's check yesterday with international Stores. So six fifty two. So no international sales on international websites yesterday. Boo. Boo boo boo. Hey boo boo. And the new store did It's about to get start using Seller Hub. I already use Seller Hub, unless this is on the worst side and under Alex. Let me sign out. Sign in again. Have I mentioned I don't like Edge? Yesterday, made it to $62. $62. So, a little over 700 total. Not counting Poshmark. I don't remember if I did anything on Poshmark yesterday. Uh, 
questions and comments. Uh, there's a scanner program app that allows you to lay out 100 cards at once and it'll scan, find and make the listing with a proper market price. American Arbitrage does it. Okay, thanks for that info. I'll check into that. I played with, so since I was up late last night, I decided just to do some little different things. So I had some uh, rock cards with bands on it. So I created some drafts for those. Just to put something a little different into the store. Can you still schedule listings? I believe so. Should be able to. Uh, hi, James. Always makes me laugh on my seller hub when it says master listing faster. It's not like things sell no matter how fast you I list them. How about helping me sell what I've always put oceans of time into already? Ain't that the truth? What app is that doing the captions? Uh, the short app I use is Opus Clip, O-P-U-S-C-L-I-P. -P. It takes long form video videos and breaks them down into shorts for you. When I worked for the census, they made me give back everything they, that was census branded even the pens. Your customer either is impersonating a census, census worker or reminiscing about their career as at the census. It's great meeting new people when they want to be counted, but the others not so much. <laughs> uh, glad to hear an update on Pee Wee. There are so many things to discuss. I'll just rant. All right, here we go. eBay has lost control and they are losing business by the buttload now and sadly don't give a F. Their fix is to screw the sellers that stay using them with BS fees and crappy service. They think they are too big to fail, but they forgot who they are and who makes them money. They still think it's the olden days where they were the big shot main selling platform. And when they're finally realized this, it's going to be too late. I don't know if they, if, if the heads of the company think that they're still this big shot selling platform, uh, I think they got the wrong heads working for eBay. There's too many, too much competition. You screwed up your site so bad, uh, and the uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. So, when Walmart put Main Street out of business, did anybody really think something was going to come along and start crushing Walmart's numbers? No, but here we got Amazon. Amazon, what's next? There's going to be a next. What is the next? Something will come along and crush Amazon. Something will come along and crush eBay eventually too. So that's just the cycle of business normally. Name one retail business that's been around. Major retail business that's been around. When you hear been in business for a hundred years it usually relates to smaller businesses or family-run businesses not like corporate corporation businesses in the retail space i mean i don't know how long target's been around but i don't remember target as a yeah i do remember target as a kid because i got a queen's right cassette at target once so Target's done pretty well over the years adapting. I just saw a new Target commercial yesterday and it looked like the mo it was the most annoying, worst commercial I've ever seen. 
where people were in the store singing and dancing around the store. And it just made me cringe. I'm like, ugh. I'm like, that. it was totally a different look for Target on this commercial. And my original thought was, ooh, that's either going to get younger people in or it's going to chase the older people away. Because it was just a cringy video. But hey, at least they do things differently to try to stay relative, right? Whereas some places don't. So give them a hand for doing something different outside the box. It just made me cringe. <laughs> but uh, but hey, I might not be their demographic they're shooting for. So, which would be a smart move. So, who else? Target's grown. I mean, hell, even the grocery stores that were around when I was young are not around anymore. At least not to the capacity. Like, we don't have Kroger's anymore here. Haven't had Kroger's for decades here. But I know they're a little bit more in the south. But when it comes to actual retail, I mean, who else is really there? I mean, Dillard's, Macy's, they are all faltering. So, just the cycle. The evolution of retail. Have you thought about listing a few the same items in both stores to see if eBay is favoring one store or another? Well, you're not allowed to list the same thing in two different stores unless they're of different conditions. So, if you list the exact same thing in each store, it's just like listing the exact same thing twice on your account and you can get popped for it. So, do, don't do that. Uh, another sad day here. I started working on my shed. Nothing all day, but finally one big sale at 10 p.m. So I'll take it. I think eBay is listening to me. I cross-listed some eBay stuff to Posh and Macari. It's getting tons of activity where it wasn't getting any traffic on eBay. The one item that did sell was one I had cross-listed. I also have been exper exper experiencing the offer issues that everyone has been complaining about and at least as of last night combined orders still wasn't working and that's mainly i believe because of that shipping policy problem that's going on so i'm now worse than january on a dollar per day clear and lowest since june of last year I have 18% more listings than I did in January. I had two zero days in January. None since. I have to be mentally strong and keep pushing to get inventory up, but it's tough. Yeah, that... When it's lacking, that is the hardest thing to do is to stay motivated. But as I've kind of said in several videos, empowering yourself some way makes it better where you feel like that you're still in charge or in power a little bit whether that's like I did creating second store cross posting to Poshmark or whatever um, trying different sale or percentage tactics on sales or percentages on advertising and all this and that as long as you feel like you're still in control of something or you can change something to change the outcome that's usually the best way to try to stay motivated is to uh, continue making changes to try to see if anything else works better. So, USPS is going to put the package in MIA once shipped. <laughs> they keep making changes to the platform, which mucks up 10 other things on the site. Yep. That's the that's the eBay way. That was Josh. Uh, sales suck. eBay shipping policy glitches. Went outside to do some yard work so I could actually feel productive and accomplished. Huh. Oh, that was a question. Uh, I have a category question. 
When you list Major League Baseball teams, football jerseys, do you list under sports cards and fan apparel or just under t-shirts for t-shirts? So, uh, yeah, I use uh, fan apparel for all my sports stuff. Kind of, if I just kind of go with whatever eBay suggests as the first one. I figured that's what they're going to push in the algorithm. So that's what I put it under. Even when I'm putting up this like an oddball thing and I'm like questioning, like, does it really go in that category? And then I'll go back and look, see what other people put theirs in. And it was in that category. I'm like, okay, go with that first category. Uh, that's what I kind of do. So I figure that's probably going to get the best push within the algorithm if somebody types it in. So, because there, there's been glitches over time on eBay here and they've been here and there that if somebody typed in St. Louis Cardinal stuff, it would only come up under Major League Baseball. It wouldn't show any of them in the, like in the hat section or in the t-shirt section. Uh, but then they'll, another time it will show them in the t-shirt and hat section. And then again, next time it may not show them in the t-shirt. So it's a weird glitch. I, I'm guessing it's a glitch that's been going on for as long as I can remember. So it doesn't always show Major League Baseball or NFL or whatever in other categories other than the fan apparel if somebody's searching for it. So, like I said, it's been a here and off and on type of thing over time. So, all right. I just sold those two. I think I have everything pulled. So I got 22 items, but some of these are going to be combined here. All right. International wise, we got a UK. And that is it. All right, let's go. First up, positively dump truck cassette. Needs a sponge. That sold for four dollars. Headed to Brooklyn, New York. Do, 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 do. Like when I was a kid, places I remember like going as a kid. My parents would shop at Sears. Ben Franklin, uh, Woolworth, I remember Zares, I think that was before Kmart, at least in the the building in, on Gravois, I think was Sears, Gravois Plaza, uh, Venture, my parents didn't really go to Target. They went to Venture. They were more of a Venture person. I remember going to Target and getting Queensryche cassette. Uh, Rage for Order. And that's the only time I remember actually going into a Target as a kid. And I, I was actually a teenager, but... So how many of those stores are still around? Target is the only one. Venture's gone. Sears are basically gone. Ben Franklin's are gone. Zares is long gone. That's uh do, 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 do. Misadventure. Self titled CD. That sold for seven bucks, headed to Mount Juliet, Tennessee. So that New York, Tennessee. So far.
unknown B logo hat. Headed to Rhode Island, sold for eight dollars. Yeah, keeping yourself motivated. I think that's why I was running so many experiments, trying different things. One, two, try to find something that works better. But it mentally kept me motivated throughout the day. Say, okay, I did change something. Now let's well, let's list. And then we'll see what happens later with that change. So experimenting and making those changes, I think, really motivated me, kept me pushing through all that all the stuff that's been going on where now i'm past the changes and i'm just you know, created the second store make sure i'm cross posting now etc so next up are you ready hey, for a hat line yeah got cardinals hats at that one make sure we get the right ones here that one and that one 950, 950, 950. All headed to Mexico, Missouri. So it's almost like um, these moments with the eBay situations going on, your business, as you stand, is in one of those times that Sears was in, that Kmart was in, that even Walmart was in. Times where you go, okay, we need to do something different. We need to pivot. If we don't, we're going to go out of business just like all those other people who started during COVID who couldn't hack it today, they've all fell by the wayside. How are you going to stick around? How are you not going to wind up like Kmart? How are you going to be like the target? What changes are you going to make to flourish for the next year, two years, five years, 10 years? What are you going to do? You got to do something. Full metal jacket, Blu-ray. So for 420, headed to New York. Because eBay on one front's making those changes, like when they buy businesses and like what they do with the sports card, um, what they try to do with the, the shoe authentic authentication program. You know, they're they're on that front, they're trying to make changes. Where they're losing it is on the back end where we come into the play. What brings them revenue? They're thinking ahead, but they're forgetting what got them there. And they're letting what got them there kind of fall to the wayside. Well, when that happens, you lose funding for those future endeavors. And trying to become more of an advertising company as opposed to an e-commerce website. Well, you're, it's kind of one's being built on the back of the other. So once that back breaks, aka us sellers, and move on to other platforms, then your advertising business falls apart also. 
Next up, Lake of the Ozark hoodie. Sold for 10 bucks, headed to Texas. Texas, Texas. Somebody, somebody at eBay has forgotten where their bread and butter comes from, basically. It's like if I decided to give up hats, selling hats, my business would start going downward because that's my, my number one item for many years. And if I start ignoring that, I'm going to feel the consequences of it. So as I open up the second store, if I start to put all my eggs into that basket and let the old store fall to the wayside, well, the old store is my bread and butter, basically. That's my income. If I let that fall aside, then that's going to hurt the second store until it's up and going. Next up, we got Dog Mom women's shirt. Sold for ten fifty. Headed to New York. But when you're one person. You have to make the time to find those changes, find those new things to try. Because one of those items could turn into your future breadwinner. So if the new store, because it's a new store, starts getting better placement, better sales, percentage-wise than the old store, then it would make sense to start focusing on that store and it be the new bread and butter eventually type of thing. So Vermeer hat sold for 10 bucks, headed to North Carolina. So all avenues are worth, no, mostly, most all avenues are worth experimenting with when it comes to something new. because it can keep you in the game and or create a new, create something new you haven't seen before that might be more lucrative than an old thing you were doing. Like when I took a chance on hats. Before that, CDs was my big money maker. I took a chance on hats and it turned into my biggest money maker. So always keep your mind open and try new things. Uh, PlayStation picks demo CD or game. Sold for 1050, headed to New York. You just sit around and do nothing then your results are going to be indicative of that if you will so we all know that eBay is failing right now F failing as you know, for us so if we just sit around and say it but don't try different things new things move on what not, cross post, Poshmark, whatever, then we're just gonna wind up out of business.
And that could not necessarily mean changing that. It could be changing what you sell also. That's another variable you could change. Adding something different. Got some uh, Jordan Eclipse shoes. So for $12, head to Chicago. Next up, Cleveland Golf hat. So for seven bucks, head to Oklahoma. CZ USA camouflage cap sold for eight fifty. Headed to Washington. And also another change to works for me to stay motivated is changing something. Moving things around, cleaning up your office, or even restructuring how you do things physically, whether that's shipping or listing, to make it flow better, make it quicker, make it faster. Justin Tubb vinyl record sold for twelve thirty. Headed to Mississippi. So never uh, forget to always try to be uh, more efficient. At least with me, when I find something that makes it more efficient, that gives me that huge spark of motivation to, to use it, to do it, and see different results. Better results, quicker results. Like right now with the sports card things for me, you know, it's just something that it's on my mind that I'm just looking at from afar. Bob Skaggs cassette. So for 420, headed to Massachusetts. Being that I have thousands of low dollar cards. If I could say, find a way where I could list those thousand cards in one day, then it would be worth it for me, right? So keeping an eye out, trying to see if there's a system that would allow me 
even to say list 500 cards in one day. Well, that 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 could be done um, in an eight-hour shift, probably. So, with uninterrupted anyway. But say 750 to a thousand cards in one day. In eight hours. Is there something that would allow me to do that? Greater Midwest Baseball Cap, added to Park Hills, Missouri, sold for ten fifty. So when I was playing with those rock trading cards just last night, I created a trading card category in my store. Something that I wouldn't put on sale, that I wouldn't promote. It would just be standalone. Uh, and then what's the lowest I could go on those cards and actually make it worth my while. So I put them up for the dollar shipping and then I put them up for $1.99. There were some that was worth about five bucks, so those went up for four ninety nine. But my curiosity is to see what I would make on that card at a dollar ninety nine. Like I haven't even looked at see what percentage eBay takes on trading cards yet. So, so what would I make on that card, not promoted, at a dollar ninety nine? with the dollar shipping. The Proposal DVD headed to Idaho, sold for $4.20. Because like you see the big company for, they sell them basically, it would be 69 cents plus a dollar shipping. So can you really make money on that just selling say 10 cards? least money worth the time and then that comes into play finding a routine that would allow you allow me to list a thousand of them in one day and then also on top of that organizing them would they be, would I be able to put them somewhere here within reach where I can just like, it would take me two seconds to pull the card. I wouldn't have to walk over there to find one card, walk over here to find another card. It's all in one spot. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, uh, we got this large sparkly women's visor. Sold for $9, headed to North Carolina. So creating a whole system around that, watching how other people do it to build my own system. That makes sense to me, because it wouldn't make sense to me if it took longer for the process than a CD because I'm going to be making less money. So it has to be a much quicker process. Everything's worth investigating, but maybe not everything's worth doing for 
you at your time and your position. What's up, P to the Wee? Got the Mizzou swimming hat, sold for ten fifty. headed to Kansas. Quill wearing off a little bit. You'll get another one midday today. Get another one midday. The printer lay bad. came in today thinking I wouldn't have nothing to talk about. It was going to be a just a video of shipping and not really saying anything since it's so early. But hey, I got onto a topic. I'm proud of you, James. <laughs> interesting for myself at least to talk about. Because when I'm talking like that, it kind of helps me be in my head exploring that area right now and all that stuff. Alright, I'm already screwing up. Two out of the gate. What happened here? something here. What did I do? How the hell do I do this to myself? Totally skipped one somehow, some way. Alright, let me make sure that's going to be the same. There's a David Bryan CD for four dollars, five ounces. How did I? I was talking and totally missed them. Let me make sure it should be the right five ounces, should be correct. Let me just make sure it needs. Media mail. Yep. Jeff. Jeff. Awesome. All right. Back on track. So it allows me to maybe have one of those epiphany moments or something. That's the stuff that keeps me mentally stimulated, I guess. Just always exploring different ideas, new avenues. Explore those areas with much greater ease.
when I'm comfortable as opposed to 20 cassette line, as opposed to being stressed out. Because when you're stressed out, you make more rash decisions, quicker decisions than maybe you should. Where when you're comfortable, it gives you the time and the headspace to think things through beforehand. What's up, Mr. Fluffy Face? Almost done here. We got one information now. Yes, I was trying to think, what can I do with this stuff, right? There's got to be a use for it. I throw so much of it away. Perforated waxy paper. What can I use that for? USPS scan form. So we've got 35 plus 6, so 41 there. So 19 here, so that's what 60. So we got 60. The Limbo CD headed to the UK, sold for seven dollars. Look at itchies. I'll get you uphill in a little while. We get you uphill to fix those in a little while. Sixty plus two yesterday, one today, so sixty three going out. Sixty three packages going out today. All right, thanks everybody for hanging out. So early for me, we got it done. Got a couple of CDs to resurface here, and then I'm off to the post office. But I go so early now, I just, they don't open on the inside till nine, so I can't drop these off. So I hope they're getting scanned. <laughs> Maybe today, since there's so many. Oh, there were so many yesterday too. I just left them in back. 
So I, I put them on the very top and put them like that. So hoping that somebody sees them and say, I care enough to scan your scan form. But it is a government organization. And caring and government really don't go hand in hand. At least for the people anyway. For their own pocketbooks, yes. For the people, not so much. So maybe I'll wait till 9 to deliver these today. So thanks everybody for hanging out. I'll see you all in the next video. Later.